Hello everybody, ni hao. Welcome back to another episode of Lan Lan Lives in China. If you are watching this video right now, it's probably because you watched my last video that was about Star Times and some of the work that they've been doing in Africa. This video is going to be more about the technical side of Star Times, like how they render services, what digital television is, the difference between analog and digital, and why the world is transitioning to digital in general. Okay, enough chitter chatter, let's get started with this video. So basically the entire world is on this shift from analog to digital television. And analog television is a TV that most often has those cute little metal bunny ears. Now a digital television doesn't have or need an antenna, so you don't see those things anymore. They look a lot like the televisions that we're used to seeing today. And there's a reason why you don't need all of those metal contraptions or all of those bunny ears to get better signal. The systems that have been traditionally used for radios and TVs are electronic analog. They do the exact same thing as our ears, but they reproduce the sound electronically. For analog televisions, combinations of audio and video are encoded and sent with a modulator via an oscillating electrical signal called a carrier. When the modulator sends the carrier wave, it encodes all of the audio and video information being sent. Then, Right before it's sent out, it modifies the information ever so slightly. When the carrier wave is received on the other side, this little thing called a demodulator detects how much the signal differs from that of a perfect carrier. By detecting the differences, the demodulator is able to interpret the info being sent over. The major drawback with analog TVs is that analog signals weaken over distance, which is why we get that staticky TV sometimes. Digital systems operate a bit differently. For digital systems, video and sound in the form of a series of zeros and ones is encoded. Think of like zeros and ones like the matrix. Your digital TV then receives and encodes the information via a little box on your TV. Because the information is encoded in a series of zeros and ones that do not vary when transmitted, you get a clearer picture because basically the information being received is a perfect copy. But that is not the main reason why people are calling for a shift to digital television. The primary motivation is to allow for the broadcasting of more channels in a single space, which is possible because digital broadcasts tend to take up less bandwidth than that of analog. Now, some countries transitioned to digital in the early 2000s. Like for me, growing up in the US, I remember when the shift to digital happened. They kept broadcasting on different stations that you had to get your box to help transition your TV to digital before a certain date or you wouldn't be able to watch TV anymore. Now, not every country has made the switch. So in order to make sure that everyone gets to the same standard, in 2005, the International Telecommunications Union and the International Organization for the Standardization of Digital TV got a bunch of nations together in Switzerland. While there, 116 nations got together and signed an agreement under which everyone pledged to transition to digital television by June 2020. It is now 2019, so everyone has a little less than a year to get to the goal. This agreement and race to digital is a large reason why you see all these African nations paying StarTimes money to get their digital television service in order. StarTimes is primarily a digital services provider. According to StarTimes, they have a system of networks that integrate every aspect of digital television. This includes a signal distribution platform and a direct-to-home satellite platform or DTH platform. DTH platforms deliver content to homes via signals emitted from satellite networks. Some of the signals are unencrypted, which makes them free for people to watch. Others are encrypted and have a wall that prevents access without the right key, and this generates a paywall. StarTimes also implements a digital terrestrial TV platform, or DTT. Just like with old school analog television, DTT is transmitted via radio frequency. Where it differs is that it delivers the content in a digital format, which results in higher quality sound and picture than our traditional analog televisions. The only problem with DTT rendered broadcasting is that DTT networks need terrestrial transmitters, which are those big towers that you see, 
that cover about 80 to 120 kilometers on average. They can be interfered with and are highly determined by how powerful the transmitter is. There are hybrids of the two different distribution platforms, but I won't get into that right now. Okay, so you've sat through this very technical video and you're probably wondering why this all matters. Well, it matters because people are figuring out ways to tap into these platforms and create their very own networks. An amazing BBC video recently covered a village in South Africa that is doing this. I'll link the video in the comment section so you can learn more about this. It's definitely worth a watch. Okay, so there you have it. A little bit of the technical side of digital television for those curious about the technical side of things. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. And if you ever want to chat me up, follow me on Twitter at Shea Butter Bay. DMs are open for questions and thoughts. All right, bye. Gotta go get on my hello bike and bike over to meet some friends. Bye.